from WBBZ TV Sports. It's time to beat the champ. Now, here are your hosts, Paul Peck and Sue Nowitzki. Welcome to Jamestown, New York, as Beat the Champ begins our month-long run at the Jamestown Bowling Company. Hi, everybody. I'm Paul Peck, joined by Hall of Fame bowler Sue Nowitzki. We're going to have a lot of fun down here, hanging out in the southern tier for the next month. That's right. It gives a lot of opportunity to bowlers down here in the southern tier and, and Pennsylvania to come out and have a chance at bowling and try to make our show. Yeah, and we've got a lot of new names for you coming up on the next month. As a matter of fact, our first match between our returning champ Andy Reddick and Jeff Dio, the only match that features guys who have bowled on Beat the Champ before. Well, summer tends to be a time when some of the bowlers take off, so it gives an opportunity for some of the other bowlers to come out and have a chance at it. Yeah, we've got some great stories and some great personalities to tell you about, so it should be a lot of fun here in historic Jamestown, New York, the birthplace of Lucille Ball. We're gonna have a little fun and we're gonna have some laughs, maybe even a little wackiness. <laughs> so let's get rolling. It's Jeff Dio on the left versus Andy Reddig on the right as we begin our first match here from the Jamestown Bowling Company and Jeff Dio will start things off against our returning champion Andy Reddig and this is Jeff's second appearance on Beat the Champ. He had a couple of match run on the show when we bowled at the Kearns Avenue Bowling Center earlier on in the year. He won one and he lost one and here we go. So. It's Jeff Dio off the bat, and not the way that Jeff wanted to get things started, and a little grimace on his face tells you that. No, he looked at his thumb when he got done, so I think he kind of lost that one. We, you have talked about this a little bit, and we'll, and I've talked about this even with Jeff, is he says the thing he's worried about is when it gets a little hotter, like it is this time of year, and a little sweaty, and see that thumb sticking a little bit is something that he's concerned about. So, But he is able to finish off the spare, so a good job there in the first frame for Jeff Dio as we move on to our defending champion, Andy Reddick, 44 years old, from Hamburg, New York, employed by the Department of Homeland Security, longtime bowler, and another one of those lefties that comes to the fore here, and we've seen the lefties have a lot of of success. Yes, he's the only lefty that we're going to see today. So again, he'll be breaking down his own condition. So we'll see how that plays out for him. Coming off the win in last week's show, a, de uh, a nice decisive victory over an outstanding bowler, Mike Zarcone. And right off the bat, we got some bedposts in the first frame <laughs> for Andy Reddick. Yeah, that's definitely one of the worst reactions you can get when you hit the pocket and you have a and practically impossible split to make. There's our social media addresses, ways to get in touch with us at Beat the Champ TV and hashtag Beat the Champ and of course Beat the Champ on our Facebook page for all the updated and latest information and matchups and qualifying. So let's see what Andy can do with the 7-10 split and not much there. So it's an open frame. So both guys a little bit of feeling out there right off the first frame uh, and that's not to be unexpected. Well, like you said, it, the challenge the challenge of bowling in the summer months and the warm weather is definitely going to be feel. And your his, hands tend to swell, your thumb swells, and you get lose your grip a little bit, and your thumb hole starts to feel tight. It's the hardest thing to deal with in the summer, time, summer months. You know, and, and, uh, and there's a good response back by Andy, and he kind of uh, uh, a little sigh of relief there from him as he grabs the strike um, on the second frame there. You know, again, it, a lot of bowling places, guys shut it down a little bit for the summer. Some of the bowling alleys close for a little while, so it is a little unusual for, for guys to be bowling this time of year, right? Yes, and um, we're joined here by Jim Mee from Jamestown Bowling Company. And Jim's a longtime bowler. We've bowled uh, together. We've bowled in the same ranks. It is quite a challenge in the summertime with the uh, feel and the grips, isn't it? Uh, yes, our summer leagues are much lighter than in the winter, obviously, like most places. And like Paul was saying, a lot of places shut down sometimes May, June, July, and open back up in August for the to get the winter league started. Right. Do you, is it stay pretty steady for you here? Is there enough people that do want to bowl this time of year, Jim? Well, we have like three summer leagues. Uh, it, you know, if it rains, we get some open play, and we, you know, we have a lot of coupons out there in the summertime to get people in on the off season. What, uh, you know, you've bowled at a pretty high level yourself. What, what was your routine in the summertime to at least try to stay current with the sport and not just go a month at a time without picking up a ball? Uh, well, years ago, I used to travel to Buffalo and I used to bowl in some of the summer sweepers they'd have down there. But, you know, probably the last 10 years, I've 
you know, I just take the summer off. I don't take it as seriously as I used to. And, you know, my son and my daughter are the bowlers now, so I'd rather, I enjoy watching them more than I like bowling myself anymore. A couple strikes in a row for Jeff Dio as he's found the groove here, and now we move back to Andy Reddig, uh, who had the strike to follow off that uh, open frame in the first. And there you go. Now it's not taking very long for these guys to heat up like a good 80-degree uh, summer day here. You are a great lefty. One of the best lefties, Jim, it was. Do lefties have an advantage here in your house? Um, it's about pretty equal. Um, we don't have a typical house shot. It's a little bit tighter than, you know, most house shots you bowl on. It's not too wet, dry. So uh, it's pretty competitive on both sides here. Andy Reddick, 44 years old, with a healthy 235 average. And, you know, we talk a little bit about the summertime and activities, and uh, Andy will put the bowling ball down a little bit, play a lot of golf and tennis this time of year. But, I, you know, knowing that he was coming back here after winning uh, last week uh, at the Tonawanda Bowling Center, he, he looks like he's been practicing because he he's looks, on a groove here. He looks mid-season form to yes, me. Yes, he does. And now we go back to Jeff Dio, who's got a run of a couple of strikes 30 years old from Lockport, New York. Works full time as an assembler at Dynabraid. Cumulative average for Jeff, a little over 210, 213. 15 years worth of bowling experience for Jeff. Yeah, never got that one to have a lot of action there to knock some pins down other than that half side. Uh, Jeff definitely got that one left of his target. Kind of gave that one a pull and um, result going through the head pin. Jeff stays busy in bowling in a couple of leagues at uh, Island Lanes uh, on Grand Island on Mondays, Manor Two Lanes on Wednesdays. Great story for Jeff, a lot of inspiration from his dad to get him into the sport. Uh, just couldn't get that pin to fall, the nine pin remains. So it's an open frame in the fourth for Jeff Dio. And this feels like a good time to take a short break. We'll be right back with more action on Beat the Champ. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Let's get back to the action here on WBBZ TV. Don't forget, at the uh, end of our show, you'll have your chance to register to win for the Gary Pools Great Grill Giveaway. It's the watch and win word, and it will come up at the end of the show. Then you go to WBBZ.TV and enter to win a Broilmaster H4 Deluxe Gas Grill from Gary Pools and Leisure and a ninth, nice, ninth frame strike for Jeff Dio. Did I, ninth, nice, nice, ninth, Gary, I can say Great Grill Giveaway, but I can't say nice, ninth frame strike. Uh -huh. Well, we've talked every show about the importance of that ninth frame and that's the builder frame it's a big opportunity to um, get a four bagger there when you build that ninth frame with the strike so here's andy reddick's ninth frame and he'll leave the four and the seven it's never good when you walk away from it yeah so uh, this is a body English sport, isn't it? You can tell, you can tell what people are thinking without having to hear them say anything. Still an important spare. It's a yep. two-pin match. So we remain tight here as Andy Reddig looks up at the scoreboard and ponders what he's going to do with the 10th frame coming up here. From the Jamestown Bowling Company in Jamestown, New York, you're watching Beat the Champ. Happy to be down here in the Jamestown area and give you guys a feel for all the great bowling that goes down on down here. And we're going to talk a lot about that and talk a little bit about all the exciting things going on here in the city as we move through the next month. And you can hear Andy yelling at the pins that time too. Could, didn't, they didn't quite respond because he still left the seven pin. No, the ball's hitting the pocket very, very weak, which is what's causing this, the seven pins. Now, is that a bowler issue, an oil issue? What, what causes that? Well, it's a lane condition issue versus a bowling ball issue. Um, his ball doesn't ha isn't generating a lot of energy in the back end to kick out those corner pins. So it's a spare early in the tenth here for Andy, and he'll get another shot at it. Going to be low scores here. Look, look like our winner's going to break 200 in this, depending on what what 
Jeff might be able to do, but a little feeling out period going on for these guys, right? Well, Jeff just needs a mark and good count now to win this match. Final roll for Andy Reddick. Yeah, a little wobble, but it will not fall. So Andy Reddick will post up his final score on the board. And that final score, as you can see, on the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard is a 189. So as Sue pointed out, a mark and a good count for Jeff, and he is going to get his second beat the champ victory and advance on to our next match against Ryan Drupp. Wait till we tell you a little bit about Ryan's story. It's a, oh. an outstanding one. There's an interesting leave that we don't normally see. Well, that's a tap. This was a great shot. We hate to see those, don't we? Especially on strikes. Yeah, definitely. So Jeff's going to want to finish this one off and then get good count, and that will get him a victory. If I had so, to leave a pin, though, I think I would pick the eight pin over a seven or a ten. It's a little bit easier to make. Yeah, definitely, especially when you're under a little pressure yeah. there. You could just adjust right off your strike mm -hmm. while making it a pin. See, that's why I like hanging out with you guys. You know, you, you guys have all this stuff down pat, you know. We've seen a lot, haven't we? I was to say, that's probably sure. why you guys have seen an awful lot. So here's Jeff Dio and his final roll, and that's exactly the way he wanted to finish it. And that strike will finish off the 193 to 189 victory for Jeff Dio, and he will advance on into our next match here. And we are off and running and off and rolling at the Jamestown Bowling Company. Jim's going to stick around with us for our next match, but Sue and I are back. We'll talk to Andy and Jeff and preview the next match. When we come back, it's Beat the Champ in Jamestown, New York, and we're back right after this. A narrow 193 to 189 win for Jeff Dio over Andy Reddig. You had those two tough frames, Andy, and I know when you're yelling at the pins like you were, that's that's probably never a good sign, is it? Yeah, a couple of bad shots, and uh, Jeff pulled great. And made despairs and stayed clean. Right, well, and both guys took a little while soon to get adjusted, but Jeff did the adjusting just enough to get the win, didn't he? Yeah, uh, I found that the we were talking about the importance of spares, and you are excellent on your spares. Did you find that these lanes were a little tighter than what you expected? Yes. Yeah, definitely tighter than qualifying was, even tighter than the practice pair. So just had yes. to adjust to it and keep moving right. All right, well, Jeff's got the adjustment at the moment down pat. Let's see how his next opponent, Ryan Drupp, does on the adjustments. It's Jeff versus Ryan when we come back to the Jamestown Bowling Company. Our second match of the day will feature our defending champ Jeff Dio against the guy you just saw on the left, Ryan Drupp, rocking the Red Sox hat here and been a good year for the Sox so far this year, so maybe Ryan will have a little of that momentum. We'll tell you a little more about Ryan's pretty incredible story uh, as we get to him, but we're going to start off with Jeff coming off that 189, 193, 189 win over Andy Reddick to advance on his second beat the champ victory and here we go with match number two from the Jamestown Bowling Company. Jeff Dio gets us started off. And he'll leave the six and the ten on the first throw. Yeah, he lost that a little bit at the bottom of the swing, kind of heard the ball hit the lane. He didn't get it projected out onto the lane, so hooked up a little early on him. Jamestownbowling.com is the website address for the Jamestown Bowling Company. We're right on the main drag here, just past downtown here in Jamestown. And 
a good spare pickup. It's worth the drive for some of that prime rib, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, we're, we're joined <laughs> here by uh, the owner of the Jamestown Bowling Company, Jim Mee, an outstanding high-level bowler in himself, but also the owner here of the Jamestown Bowling Company. And, yes, we're going to let him talk a little bit about the prime rib and everything else he's got going on at the game time sports bar and grill here in a moment. But there's our first look at 28-year-old Ryan Drupp. Up until three weeks ago, a resident of California, Pennsylvania, just outside of Pittsburgh, but now a resident here of Jamestown as he's taking a new job. And how about that for starting things off? Ryan Drupp with a big strike on the first frame. Ryan just moving here to Jamestown to work at WCA Hospital as a respiratory therapist. And just randomly, Sue walked into the Jamestown Bowling Company to do a little opening bully and said, hey, what are you guys doing in here? There's a qualifying for a TV show? I think I'll give that a shot. And son of a gun, here he is. Isn't that a great example? That's an awesome story. Here's, here's one step better. He's never bowled scratch leagues. He only bowls handicap leagues. Really? So... He came out and bowled a scratch tournament just off the cuff because it was going on while he was open bowling and was the second high qualifier. Right. So that is a message to everyone. Get out and come out to a qualifier and give it a go and get yourself on TV. Yeah. Jim, I think that's the cool thing about this sport is that now he's a pretty good bowler. He bowled a lot in Pennsylvania, but he just sort of randomly decided to pop in and bowl a little bit. And here's the opportunity for him to get a chance to be on TV. Yeah, definitely, it worked out good for him, and uh, I, I hope he does well today. Got a tough one to pick up here, but he does a nice job in doing it. So in the second frame, he'll grab the spare, and he'll do the handoff back to Jeff Dio here for his second frame of bowling. Early on in this match at the Jamestown Bowling Company, at Beat the Champ TV is our Twitter address. Hashtag Beat the Champ for your thoughts and comments, and the Facebook page always has everything updated including qualifying we'll talk a little bit about our next set of qualifiers coming up in a couple of weeks in just a moment and jeff is going to leave that 10 pin and he'll be looking for a spare here in the second frame we've got qualifying at the alley brant lanes in lockport those are coming up on thursday july 7th saturday july 9th and then sunday july 10th with the top 24 roll off later the day on saturday sunday july 10th for our next set of shows as we go from one end to western New York to the other end of Western New York, right? I like the fact that they've added a Thursday night qualifier because it helps now that their leagues are done, it helps to bring a few extra bowlers out and come out in the evening instead of just having to come out on your weekends if there's something planned for the Saturday of that weekend. You can come out in, at night on Thursday the 7th instead and bowl 7 or 9 p.m. squads. There's your early look at the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard and Janelle Sabin keeping us up to date on the numbers as we move to the third frame here for Jeff Dio. Jim Mee, the owner of the Jamestown Bowling Company, joining us. All right, to pump us up a little bit here and tell us about uh, uh, about the effort that goes into turning out that awesome prime rib that everybody on the crew enjoyed the night before our taping. Okay, well, I'll start real quick. Uh, about nine years ago, you know, we, we, uh, I got kind of seen the handwriting on a wall. You know, the lead bowling was down. We just weren't, you know, the cash flow just wasn't there anymore from that. So we decided to, to turn the bar into a sports bar restaurant. Start out with not that kind of menu that we have now, really, on a much smaller scale, but it started to grow, so we decided to hire a chef, and we just went with the whole nine yards with, with dinners, and uh, unfortunately, uh, this guy, his uh, prime rib was his best, and he was kind of between jobs somehow, I don't know how, but I was lucky enough to get him, and got started that way. Yeah, and, and like I said, most of the guys on the crew that, that we were here for dinner enjoyed the prime rib, but you got a lot of other stuff on the menu, and it, it was a great atmosphere. We happened to be there with an NBA game going on and some baseball going on, and there was a big crowd of people cheering on both games and everything. It was a really fun it was a really fun place to be, and, and again, even on a night when maybe there isn't as much bowling in the middle of the summer, I would assume the sports bar stays pretty busy, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Uh, you know, like amazingly between, the, you know, the, the food and the... Uh, and the beverage and the bowling, uh, the bowling ranks, it ranks third on the list now of, for the year. So, mm -hmm. but it's still a decent sized number, and it also enhances the sports bar, along with along with off the street trade, of course. Right. And we got to give a little uh, pump up here to Miss uh, Navoisky, who dominated the uh, the trivia contest that went on a little bit after dinner. Well, the subject was food and beverage, <laughs> it so was I guess food, I had right. a little bit she of just an so, advantage. Yeah, the food and beverage expert just so happened to have food as the category. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. That well, was my trick. Yeah, you, you didn't give any I answers. started the conversation, and then while everybody was talking, I played the game yeah. so I could get points ahead of everybody. Every so there time, was a trick to every it. time there was a question about how to what el what went into a, a mixed drink, you were uh, you were dominating, weren't you? Well, if I don't know that, then <laughs> I need a new career. <laughs> Still got a tight match here between Ryan and Jeff as Ryan came up with a spare in the third frame and he'll move on to frame number four here. But in all serious, is being in this business, in the bowling business, in the food and beverage business, the trend is now to you know, enhancing your restaurant and having chefs on and being able to do banquets, being able to do parties and having that menu. The menu is so impressive. And I watched people continue to come in even after the bowling center closed. It was 10 o'clock at night and there were still people coming in and starting to order food. So that's a that's a great thing to do in this business nowadays. Well, definitely. I mean, of course, we try to have a, a late night menu after dinner and, um, you know, we have good wings, good pizza, a lot of good sandwiches. So, you know, we try to appeal to, you know, doesn't matter what, what time you come in, you can get something that is really good. I saw you have uh, 50 cent wings on Tuesdays, 4 to 10. That's a good price for chicken wings these days. It is, you know, I think they're going for about 75 bucks a case now. So you'll be able to, <laughs> you know, you're not really making money there, but you're bringing people in. They might have, you know, um, a couple of beverages to make up for it. No, so the people of Jamestown should come in and try this because the food is phenomenal. If you've not been here before, you have to come in and right. try it. Well, I can tell you, I have a couple of friends that live down here, and when I told them when I was coming down, they're like, oh, we. We would go over there for, for, for just to eat all the time. They're not necessarily bowlers, but they were they knew exactly everything about the restaurant and gave it a lot of praise. So you're doing a good job with that, Jim. And uh, let's say hey, let's face it, bowlers like to eat, and right, we all like to eat. So you know you got to you got to keep them happy. We're looking at Jeff Dio. He is set to bowl here and finish off. We finished off the fourth frame. This is the fifth frame, and there's a strike for Jeff. We're going to be back with more Beat the Champ bowling action in just a minute. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Let's get back to the action here on WBBZ TV. Don't forget, coming up at the end of our show, we'll give you the watch and win word for the Gary Pools Great Grill Giveaway that you can then go to WBBZ.TV and enter to win the Broilmaster H4 Deluxe Gas Grill from Gary Pools and Leisure. The four and the seven remain after Jeff Dio's first throw in the eighth frame. So Jeff has a 16 pin lead in this match. Getting close to the end, coming up to that ninth frame builder frame, which mm -hmm. could be a big frame for Ryan to strike in to uh, put a little pressure back on Jeff. So here's Jeff trying to grab the spare in the eighth frame. Got it. Good job by Jeff Dio as he's looking to come up with his second consecutive win. Winner of this match moves on to take on Chuck Jagodzinski. A uh, familiar name to bowlers around Western New York who will make his Beat the Champ debut in our next match. So here we go. Here's the big ninth frame for Jeff Dio. It's a tight one, as you can see. Look of focus and determination on his face. And nice there's shot. the results he wanted. Four of the last five strikes for Jeff Dio. And now... The pressure goes back on Ryan Drupp. A strike here will cut Jeff's lead to a mere six pins. So this would be a, so this is a key. This big is, shot for him. You talk about it all the time. Ninth frame is key. I was afraid that it didn't turn quite enough there, but he got what he needed and he got the results he needed with a strike. It was a little bit light, but he got a real good mix on the pins. So now Ryan moves to the 10th frame and he has a chance to really put the heat on Jeff Dio. He's got his mom, his dad, and his girlfriend here watching him. Good cheering section on hand for Ryan. This right here kind of shows us uh, the importance of whether you choose to start the match or whether you choose to finish the match as the high qualifier because Jeff chose to have the match in his control but Ryan could put the pressure on him right here How about that? to have to match what he does. And that's the ultimate way to put the pressure on, a strike on the first throw of the 10th frame. So be 
because the lead's under 10, Jeff now has to match. Now Matt, he's going to need that first strike in 10th now. There's a look of focus and determination on Ryan's face. Just didn't get the one pin to fall. Not, not quite the same look there from well, Ryan. Four pin is one of those leaves that can, that can strike. It's just a little bit high on the head pin, but oftentimes it's a, it's a pin that will trip forward. Just Getting the first strike though was important for Ryan. Nice easy throw. Curves in and grabs the spare. So Ryan posts up a 218 on the board, and that is what Jeff will have to top in order to get his second consecutive win here at the Jamestown Bowling Company and move on to the third match of the day. So the 218's on the board for Ryan. Anything less than a strike, and Ryan will be our winner. On this throw, you mean? On this throw. Okay. Well, there you go. Pretty simple. Can Jeff do it? Great yes, shot. he can. How about that for answering the bell and answering the pressure? You like that as a competitive bowler, Jim. You like to see guys step up like that, don't you? Well, definitely. I was watching him in the qualifier, and he just, first time he ever bowled here, I believe, he just came right in and shot uh, over 700. Yeah, and we talked a little bit about everything that Jeff has had to overcome with some of his health issues, and great to see him back in bowling as well as he is right now. So where are we at now, Sue? What does he need to do over these next two? That, well, that, that will do. That will do. All right, well, he there you go. He didn't need that much. It's a bit overkill, but No such thing not? as overkill, right? <laughs> so Jeff Dio is going to come up with a win here as he really answers the bell. And right now, one, two, three, four, five of the last six throws for Jeff have been strikes, particularly that one in the 10th frame when he needed it. And it's going to be Jeff Dio's second consecutive win. So well, the, can, trip, the trip down from Lockport has already paid off, hasn't it? You can tell by his body language um, that he's relaxed. He's, uh, he's very loose right now. So he's in a good spot. So it's a 233 to 218 win for Jeff Dio over Ryan Drupp. We'll see plenty of Ryan, not only here at the Jamestown Bowling Company, but in future Beat the Champ shows. But we're going to get to see another chance for Jeff Dio to keep the winning streak alive. He moves on to our next match. Jim, thanks very much for the time. We'll catch up with you later on in the month doing a great job here at the Jamestown Bowling Company. We appreciate your insight. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Jim Mee is the owner of the Jamestown Bowling Company. Sue and I come back and we'll talk to Ryan and Jeff and preview our next match when we return on Beat the Champ from the Jamestown Bowling Company. Terrific match that came right down to the 10th frame, and it's Jeff Dio with the 233 to 218 win over Ryan Drupwell. You've been in Jamestown for less than a month. You didn't know anything about the show. You randomly wind up on TV. Give me a give me a feel for how things uh, went. It was, it was great. I had a lot of fun. This is the first time I've ever been on TV bowling, and I mean, I'll definitely be back again to do it. So. I, I loved it. It was yeah. fun. Well, now that you're a full-fledged Western New Yorker, uh, we know we're going to get more yeah. out of you coming up. But we also know that Jeff's going to continue to bowl here. So, Jeff, I noticed your swing got really loose and you started, your body language got really relaxed. Did you find your groove out there? Yeah. Um, I made the ball change, too. Got a little better reaction and helped a lot. Yeah, you could tell. <laughs> All right, so Jeff's going to continue on. Can he pull off the sweep of this first week here at the Jamestown Bowling Company? Chuck Jagodzinski is his next opponent. It's Jeff and Chuck. When we come back to the Jamestown Bowling Company, you're watching Beat the Champ. Third match of the day from Jamestown features Jeff Dio and 
Chuck Jagosinski in. Jeff will start things off, and then we'll talk to you a little bit more about Chuck, probably one of the most accomplished bowlers in Western New York that we haven't had on the show yet. So we really get a chance to tell you about Chuck, and there's an interesting story as to why he hasn't been on the show yet. But right now, you're looking at Jeff Dio with a chance to be just the second bowler to sweep a show. John Palmer did that a couple of weeks ago um, up at Manor 2. So Jeff's got a chance to get in our Beat the Champ history book, and he keeps doing that, and that's where he's going to wind up. So Jeff Dio with a strike in the first frame, and here's our first look at 48-year-old Chuck Jagosinski from Lancaster, works full-time at the Wendy Correctional Facility. As I mentioned, one of the premier bowlers in Western New York, and we'll rattle off some of his accomplishments, but it's a bit of a surprise we haven't seen Chuck up to this point. Nice shot. Boy, he stumbled a little bit as he got rid of the ball well, there. Well, had to his, catch his balance. That's his approach. Is it? Yes, he's always bowled like that. So that's what he's comfortable with. That's what his timing is, is comfortable with. So as long as I've known him, and we go back to our college days, um, his approach has always been the same. Chuck, Chuck qualified for our first Beat the Champ shows up at the Rapids Bowling Center, and he got sick the morning of the show and couldn't bowl. So that's why we haven't seen him up to this point. He should have been in the first show, wasn't able to, and it's taken this long for him to get back into the qualifying run, and that was not a good leave for Chuck here in the second frame. He'll have some work cut out for him here. Makeable spare, but not easy. Well, he'll get two of them, so it'll be an open frame and an eight for Chuck Jagosinski in the second frame, and it's back to Jeff Dio coming off a 193-189 win over Andy Reddick, and then a 233-218 win over Ryan Drupp. So Jeff from Lockport, New York, 30 years old, on a run here. He's up to three Beat the Champ wins, and a chance to get another one here and a sweep. And there's another kind of unusual, ugly-looking leave. Yeah, I don't know if this lane's starting to break down a little bit on them because he was pretty locked in in this lane, and then in, in, in practice I saw that the ball was hooking up a little high on the right lane. And after some bowling and the lights, and the lanes will tend to change a little differently because of the, the heat from the lights will affect the oil. So it's an open frame for both guys in the second, Jeff and Chuck. And after strikes in the first frame and opens in the second, we're pretty even as you got a look briefly a moment ago at our Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard. And there it is again. And there's Janelle Saban keeping us up to date on all the scores between Jeff and Chuck in our third match of the day here from the Jamestown Bowling Company. Frame but, number three. Like you said, we both know that it's a little, that we've seen it difficult to keep winning on this show, keep the strings sure. going. And I think the lanes change. You don't expect them to change as much. you got to be right on top of the moves where the new guy coming in possibly just practices on the shot and just sees the shot for what it is where there's a preconception with the bowler that's coming that's been on the lanes already. Chuck doesn't waste any time. <laughs> I tell you, it's interesting watching that approach by Chuck. I mean, I don't mean to laugh, but it's just, it's just unusual. But, and that's why I'm a little surprised when like, you said that that's just what yeah. he always does. As, as a bowler, you know, I'm, def I'm definitely used to it. But at first, if it's out of the corner of your eye and you're bowling a couple lanes down, you fear that he's falling. Yes. And, oh. you know, now, of course, I know that's his style, so it, it, it doesn't bother me. But at fir the first time I saw it, the first couple times I saw it, it kind of catches your eye when you're bowling next to him. Chuck Jagosinski has been at every qualifier since we've gotten the show running here, so he has really got uh, heart beat the champ in his heart, and this is, again, his first chance to be on the show, so we're happy for him on that. And there's a nice, nice strike from Chuck in the fourth frame. Four Buffalo City titles, two-time Bowler of the Year in Buffalo, and the 2016 Tri-City Masters champion is Chuck Jagosinski. Like we said, a lot of accomplishments for him. So now Jeff Dio, who, amongst the other things that you said he's battling, is he's he's been hot. He said that I'm. I, 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 he found himself a little spot over there uh, when he's not bowling under the air conditioning vent to try to stay cool. Well, if you see him put his thumb in the bowling ball, he's got a piece of red tape over, over his thumb. And that's so that the ball will slide out a little easier, a little faster, because you do tend to swell under these conditions. And mm -hmm. if you're hot, 
your swelling even more. You can see the red tape right there as he bounces the bag in his right hand. Yeah, that's just to let the balls come off his thumb a little easier and not hang in it. That's a summer issue for bowlers, right? It really is. Because you get hot, you get sweaty, you get swollen a little bit. And you know what the humidity also affects is the approaches, because the approaches are wood. And when you're, when you're sliding, um, they tend to pick up the, you know, the humidity in the air, and they tend to get tackier, so you tend to stick. So the couple things when you're bowling in the summertime, it does change. Your thumb hole has to be made bigger so that your thumb can expand. And your shoes, you tend to have to have shoes that slide a little bit more mm -hmm. when you're on wood approaches, and most approaches are still wood. Interesting changes as the year goes on. And I think the other thing that's interesting for this time of the year as Jeff grabs the spare in the fifth frame is a lot of guys shut it down this time of year. They take breaks. So, you know, so they, so maybe the guys that are qualifying for the shows aren't bowling in the leagues three times a week as they usually are, or in Chuck's case, four nights a week, right. Sundays at Wimbledon, Mondays at Broadway, Tuesdays at Manor, and Thursdays at Alden. So, you know, he's a busy guy, and I don't know how busy he is this time of the year, but so they get a little bit out of practice, right? Oh, absolutely, and this is a game of timing. And when you're bowling, consistently and you're bowling often, your timing is good every day of the week. When you take time off, the first thing that goes is your timing. Here's Chuck, gonna grab the spare in the fifth frame. So it's a tight match, Jeff a little bit ahead at the moment, but Chuck Jagosinski's keeping the pressure on him. It's an 11 pin lead at the moment for Jeff Dio, but you know, a lot of bowling left here in Jamestown. Oh, that is uh, a cluster of pins that will challenge Chuck Jagosinski here in the sixth frame. Yeah, another challenging spare. Whenever you've got a bunch together, uh, you want to be careful not to chop anything. But this one, you can tend to move uh, six boards off of your strike ball and um, tends to fit right in there just like your strike ball would. Oh, what a nice job. What a nice job to pick that spare up in the sixth frame for Chuck Jagosinski. The action will continue on Beat the Champ in just a minute. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Well, you can see the, the, the red, white, and blue ball is the choice at the moment for Jeff. We'll watch and see if he makes any changes here. He's on lane 17 right now. Well, that ball, because of its shiny surface, tends to retain some energy, where the ball he used before, which was on the duller side, will tend to roll out and that when it rolls out or when it doesn't hit as hard you'll see the seven pins the white seven pins and uh, so he has better uh, hit better carry with with this ball with the shinier surface so it's the second throw here in the seventh frame for jeff deal looking for his third consecutive victory and he'll get the spare and a little slap of the hand for Chuck, and we'll turn it over to Chuck. 52 career 300 games for Chuck Jagosinski. 29 800 series with a high of 849. As I mentioned, one of the premier bowlers in all of Western New York. And there's why. Chuck made a ball change there. Chuck went and brought a different ball over with him. So. He wasn't definitely yeah, he's, not As happy. you might have seen, he had it. He was sitting over there waiting with the ball in his hands, like like he was going to get that thing warmed up and ready yeah, to go. Yeah, he did warm up with this ball, so he knew what it was going to do. And there's two in a row, and whatever that was, it worked for Chuck Jagosinski. A pair of consecutive strikes. That tells you the importance of equipment, though. The technology is so advanced, and when you're struggling, if you're going light and going high and you can't seem to find that middle ground, then you definitely have to change balls. You change balls faster than you move on the lane. So it's just a two pin lead at the moment for Jeff Dio as he rolls here in the eighth frame and that's one way to up that lead is grabbing a strike. Yes, this match has gotten really close. Yep. Starting to get in a little groove here. The guys are starting to feel it a little bit. You know, we saw the scores significantly higher in our second match than in our first match, and they may be even higher here. Nice frame. And the 10 pin will hold for Jeff Dio. 
think he's having a little trouble with that, that thumb. He, I saw him look he, right down to it as soon as he threw it. The tape helps, or I once see, the tape gets a little sweaty, does I it not see, help I as much? I see a lot of people use the tape. I find that it curls. Oh, he missed it. So he is unable to get the spare, so it's an open frame in the ninth, and for as much as we talk about the key to the ninth, that might be the that's key a, that's for That's a double Jeff. whammy right there. Yeah, really. So especially, now. Especially when he changes balls and and has really found something here. So here's the door opener for Chuck Jagosinski. Ninth frame for him. Never got enough power on that well, one to knock the right side noticed, pins down. If you notice, the ball hit very left of target. He crossed his body with that and his target was a couple boards to the right of what he actually rolled over, which is what caused the ball to go left of the head pin. Mm -hmm. So that was really just a bad shot on his part. Boy, was he tiptoeing the side of the frame there or what? And it's gonna be an open frame in the ninth, so both guys with opens in the ninth, uh, not necessarily the builder frame that you talk so much about, so. Uh -oh. That, you know, that may be the knock it down and start over again frame for these guys. So now we go to the 10th for Chuck. And that's a way to respond right there. Well, he's still strike. got an 11 pin lead, so double here will seal this up for him. He had a little wiggle room. Yeah, which is a good thing he had it yeah. before leaving that open frame. So here's Chuck, chance to put this one away. And another strike in the 10th frame, and that's going to get Chuck Jagosinski the win. And don't forget, just in a few moments, we'll have our Gary Pools Great Grill giveaway watch and win word. You can go to WBBZ.TV and enter to win a Broilmaster H4 Deluxe Gas Grill from Gary Pools and Leisure. Contest rules and registration at WBBZ.TV. No purchase necessary. And a seven pin will not fall, but a good performance for Chuck Jagosinski is going to be enough to get him a win as Chuck posts on the board. A final score for him of, let's see, we're waiting on our final score. 181. So the run for Jeff Dio, it was a good well, one. Actually, nope, not yet. Nope, we're going to see what he does here. Nine spare. Where does that leave us? Nine spare. And good count. We'll Still got a chance? Win. He sure does. All right, well, then when I was a little premature there because we thought Chuck might have clinched it with that second right. strike in the 10th frame, but. We were a little blocked from the scoreboard there, but now yep. that we see it. So the 181's on the board for Chuck, but the chance to still pull out a win for Jeff. So what does he need here? He needs spare nine. Spare eight will give us a tie. So a spare and at least nine, nine gets Jeff nine the win. Nine strike. And if we get a tie, which we haven't had yet, and beat the champ, then we get a two-frame roll-off, correct? Two-frame roll-off. So here it is, match is on this throw for Jeff Dio. Can he become just the second beat the champ bowler to sweep a week? He needs nine pins. And he doesn't get it. Wow. And that means Chuck Jagosinski is gonna get the win. Wow, how is that for a 10th frame? Uh, that's not what was expected. Not the way that Jeff has bowled so far today. And it's a 181 to 180 victory. How about that? Boy, that's, didn't expect to see that, did you? Wow, as a bowler, I know how that feels. And that is terrible. That yeah. feels terrible. Even and I, out of the corner of my eye, I even saw Chuck sort of rolled his eyes and shook his head at, at he, you don't expect to see anybody that. Anybody who's sort of blown ball doesn't wish that on anybody. Wow. Really. All right. Well, we'll find out what uh, Jeff is thinking, and we'll talk to Chuck about getting the win here and moving on. Uh, a crazy ending to our final match of the day here at the Jamestown Bowling Center. We wrap it up right after this.
Well, it was a dramatic and even a little bit of a shocking finish that leads to Chuck Jagosinski's 181 to 180 victory over Jeff Dio and Jeff Boy. I think everybody, including us, feels for you after a tough way to end it like that. Yeah, the the worst was missing that 10 pin in the ninth. That's what cost me. Not the seven count at the end. Right. I'm more mad about missing the ten pin. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, you put on a nice show, a couple of consecutive wins, and and uh, it's not your first time, and I know it's not going to be your last right. time. So thanks for some excellent bowling. Chuck, I saw there was a key ball change there that you made. Yeah, the lanes were very tight, so I got a very aggressive ball, but in that what eighth frame, I just threw it wider and cranked it a little too much, and it went high on me. So. But yeah, that was a good change. It was a good change. Well, congratulations. Here's the trophy. So there you go. So Chuck gets to uh, take home this week's Beat the Champ trophy from the Jamestown Bowling Company. Both guys get some tickets to the upcoming Lucille Ball Comedy Festival in August. So another chance for you guys to get down here and hang out in Jamestown a little bit and do a little more bowling. But a great match, and we're going to see more of Chuck Jagosinski. We'll come back and preview next week's show from Jamestown when we return on BTC. Well, Sue, bowling is a sport full of drama, both good and bad, and we saw a little bit of both of that in our three matches here this week. That's right. We've got to see someone that had the opportunity to never bowl on TV before and come and perform, and then we saw that dramatic, terrible finish for Jeff where we all felt for him yeah. when that happened. Yeah, I think we all did, and Jeff's such a good guy who's fought an awful lot in his life, and you can't help but root for him, and that was a tough way to have it end. But in Chuck Jagosinski back next week, one of the outstanding bowlers in Western New York, going to face three guys in next week's show that have never been on the show before, so that sets up as a very interesting matchup. Absolutely. It's going to be a mystery to everybody what we're going to see next week, so everybody needs to tune in. Yeah, so we're going to be back in Jamestown here at the Jamestown Bowling Company. This is the city that invented the voting machine put my vote down for some more action like we saw this week so make sure you're with us next week when beat the champ continues from the jamestown bowling company for sue i'm paul peck for everybody at the crew at wbbc keep rolling we'll see you next week